Well, with 224 days until the midterm elections, we cover the circus that was Katanji, 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 Katanji Brown Jackson. Uh, those hearings that went on. Gas prices have leveled off at historic highs. What's next? And the politics of personality over the bigger picture. We'll cover all that and a lot more on this week's Dale Carter's America. From the heart of flyover country, he's not on the far right, and he's certainly not on the far left. Like you, he's somewhere in the middle. This is Dale Carter's America. Well, first, it's the um, kerfuffle. Is kerfuffle the word? I like that word. That's well, a good word. We should ask uh, Vice President Harris if kerfuffle is a word. That sounds like a Joe Biden word, you know, like malarkey or... Uh, I don't think he can say kerfuffle. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, probably not. But uh, the Oscars last night, uh, Chris Rock uh, says he's not going to press charges against Will Smith. If you miss this at the Oscars, you, you certainly have heard about it by now. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, that, was a, that was a nice one. Okay. I'm out here. Uh oh, Richard. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. You the- my name out your fucking mouth. Wow, dude. Yes. It was a G.I. Jane jump. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth! I'm going to, okay? <laughs> I can, oh, okay. That was a greatest night in the history of television. Okay. <laughs> okay. Some people are saying it was a stunt um, that uh, Chris Rock told a joke about Jada... Jada, what's Jada her? Pinkett Smith. Jada Pinkett Smith, yeah. Will Smith's wife. Yeah. Yeah. About, you know, I guess she's got a bald look going now and uh, said, couldn't wait to see her in G.I. Jane. Next thing you know, Will Smith comes up, slaps him, and then in a profanity laced tirade says, don't talk about my wife. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Is that, is, is it a put up? Well, or? first of all, I definitely don't think it was staged because, uh, you know, there was like genuine shock and emotion on both of their faces. Mm. Um, it's just hilarious. Like I just posted on my own Facebook page. I said it would have been funnier if Chris Rock punched back. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the the thing is, like the whole thing with. Uh, I mean, first of all, I don't care about the Oscars. I don't think you watch. I don't think no. probably most of the people listening. I never even heard of the this. movies that were nominated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But um, you know, there's been this thing going on with Will Smith and his wife where she's been kind of sleeping around and stuff, and I oh. think he's he's been kind of either okay with it or he hasn't done anything about it. So it's just kind of funny that, you know, this guy will let a bunch of people bang his wife and then like somebody makes a joke about her bald head and like, that's the line. That's, that's when he's going to, you know, do something about it. Sometimes when you're on a hair trigger, it takes very little to pull that trigger. Yeah. And that's probably true. You know, maybe he, uh, you know, he feels guilty about not, not taking a stand on some Mm. of these other things, you know, with her. Well, Coda wins the best picture. I thought Coda was something in, in a piece of music. You know, a Coda. Isn't that like a rest or something or uh-huh. an extended note? Yeah, Coda is the end of the song. So, like, ah. it's a different part that you go to to end the song. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, it won the best picture. Did you see it? Never heard of it. Never heard of it. I didn't hear <laughs> of it either, but it won the best picture. Uh, do, do you know who Jenna Sharp is? is? Is that a name I should know? Jenna Sharp? Jenna Sharp. No. Okay, because my friend Eric Egan posted this on his Facebook. He says, here's an excellent take on last night's Will Smith, Chris Rock dust up at the Oscars by my friend Jenna Sharp. Maybe she's just a nobody who's one of Eric's friends. Maybe. But Eric is a name dropper, and he likes to drop Hollywood names. Okay, quote, unquote, some of the people praising Will Smith for defending his woman couldn't even agree on the definition of a woman last week. I'd say Will Smith hits like a girl, but I'm not a biologist. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best one yet. That's great. All right. So there you go. There's a take on that. <laughs> Oscars in the books, and maybe they found a way to become relevant by having a fight. And and maybe it could be something that the Country Music Awards could do. Maybe, you know, Justin Moore, who's a little guy, could take a swing at Luke Combs, who's a big guy. Yeah. And we could see if we could get some ratings for that. Yeah. I mean, if it was staged, 
that is just a brilliant marketing maneuver because, <laughs> like, nobody gives a shit about the Oscars anymore. And I think, you know, like, a lot of people were posting uh, in, like, you know, on conservative Twitter and stuff like that. Well, like, if this happened more often, maybe I would actually watch the yeah. Oscars. Yeah. Like, yeah, totally. <laughs> All right. NCAAs, uh, we're down to the final four in Division One, but I wanted to give a shout out to the Northwest Missouri State Bearcats as they won the NCAA Division II title over Augusta, 67-58 over the weekend at the Ford Center in my hometown of Evansville. Evansville's been hosting the Division II um, Final Four for a while now uh, with a rich basketball history with the two universities that are there. Um, But this is the first time a Division II team has won that title three years in a row. So Northwest really has a great program going there. They've won it four out of the last five years. Um, who knows? Maybe they want to play like half their home games in Evansville because they play so well there. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Congrats to them. So congrats to them. Final four of the uh, big tournament, the NCAA men's basketball tournament. Uh, there was a lot of upsets during the tournament. When it comes down to the final four, it, it's the blue bloods of, of college basketball. Top seeded Kansas was the only number one seed to make the final four. Villanova, Duke, and North Carolina will play for it. Um, St. Peter's, they were the 15th seed, the Cinderella. Do you follow this at all? Not really, but I did hear about St. Peter's a little yeah. bit. Their uh, end came to uh, North Carolina, so they made it all the way to the Elite Eight, the first 15 seed ever to make it to the Elite Eight. I remember I went to George Mason University mm-hmm. for my undergrad, and uh, they made it to the Final Four one year that yeah. I was there. I remember or like that. Re- maybe right before it was 20. 20- 10 or 2011 something like that mm-hmm. and uh it was a big deal i mean it was a real big deal yeah but then they lost and then we didn't make it to the <laughs> to the big dance again after and that. then you don't care yeah and exactly. you just kind of move on it kind of gets filed back there with the oscar yeah. stuff and even then i was just kind of like oh go team you know whatever yeah. i played in the pet band and all that stuff but, oh yeah you know my son matt was in the uh, marching band in mizzou but he wouldn't play in the pep band for mm-hmm. basketball. Mm-hmm. I mean, he loved being in the marching band for the Tigers football team, but but he couldn't stand the squeak of the tennis shoes on the floor. That oh, ee- really? Ee- 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 oh, really? Yeah. That ever got to you? No. I can't, I find it kind of soothing, actually. I like oh. that sound. Yeah. You have a high uh, standard Unlike the nails that. on the chalkboard. Speaking of which, we just, uh, me and the wife, we just watched Jaws. And you know that scene where he where they're all in the, in the uh, meeting, the – the city council meeting okay. or whatever. You've seen Jaws, I've right? I've seen, yeah. And then uh, Shaw, the the uh, Fisher guy, he's right. like, eh, with the nails on the chalkboard. <laughs> so that's that's what that reminded me of. What a random take. I know, I know. I know. Just, that, like, well, that could be like a thing on this podcast. Kurt's random take. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, double standard, New York style. Wasn't it that, it wasn't that long ago that uh, the city of New York was firing police officers and other city workers who weren't going to get the shot. Right. They were just fine being on the front line before there was a shot, taking care of people in New York, but then they put a vax mandate in place, and those people said, no, not going to do it, so they were all fired. Uh, Do you think this is a double standard? Uh, The New York mayor says that now he's going to lift the ban on sports figures and actors. So that means that uh, Kyrie Irving can play basketball in the city of New York, and the New York Yankees, who have said they don't want to get vaccinated, they can play baseball. Yeah, well, it's totally transparent because they make the city a lot of money. And, uh, you know, there was a, a really interesting thing, and I applaud Kyrie Irving for taking the stand that he did. And there was a couple games like two weeks ago or something like that where he wasn't allowed to play, so he bought tickets. I don't know if we talked about this or not, but he bought tickets. He plays for the Brooklyn Nets, if anyone doesn't know. Um so he wasn't allowed to play in the game because he wasn't vaccinated. Yeah. So he bought tickets to the game, went to the game without a mask on, and then after the game, went down on the court and was like handshaking and hugging all of his teammates and stuff. So it's like it, he did such a great job of just exposing the the hypocrisy. You know, you can't play, but you can go and then, you know, as a patron and, and then hug all your teammates. What do you think, though, if you're a cop and you got fired for, you know, holding up your rights to not get these shots? Right. And now, you know, these big superstars, you know, they get a pass on this deal. Right. I mean, surely there's actionable stuff going on here. I mean, you could take these folks to court, right? I think there are going to be court cases that are going to, be, that are going to come out of all Who this. knows? But, I mean, I don't know if you're getting this <clears throat> to this or not, but, you know, even the Supreme Court is not uh, reliable on this. We just had a Supreme Court case about the vax mandate in the military, and, and Kavanaugh sided with the, right. the liberals on the court right. to uphold the mandate. So. 
you know, I mean, it's obviously it's it's terrible. It's sad. It's it's unfortunate. But um, it's to be expected. You know, it's it's par for the course with politics these days. You know, the city is making money off of basketball and baseball. So they're going to make an exception. The cops are, you know, racist and terrible. Yeah. And and, you know, they're they're second class citizens now. So screw them. They they'll get fired. That's just how it is. That's just the standard that that the city is going to uphold. Well, the loony left on the Democrats, um, they're not going to be happy with Biden when they see his budget because he put in a lot of money for cops, Yeah, uh, extra money for cops. So we'll uh, get to that. We'll talk about the Supreme Court here in a little bit as well. Uh, but first, another issue that came up during the hearings that we're going to get to as well is what is the definition of a woman? Well, you know, it's it's kind of like race. It's like a social construct. You can be whatever you want to be. We did a whole podcast on you could be whatever you want to be. Mm-hmm. You wanted to be the buff, muscular guy. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be the rich guy. And, and you made memes for that. So uh, I didn't see any extra money in my bank account. Yeah. Uh, but at least you – and I don't see any ripples on you other than yeah. what was on Facebook. Um, I did go to the gym <laughs> <laughs> twice last week so okay so we had the we've talked about this a lot the, the guy who now says he's a woman um and everybody all the news outlets are calling it she her blah 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 right. okay but you know and, and i only saw this dude in the water when right. you see this dude stand up this dude is like six four maybe he's tall yeah he's yeah. real tall and you know that swimsuit doesn't hide yeah. what's going on down below yeah right um, so Ron DeSantis, the governor of uh, Florida, who is, I, I think, in my mind, the front runner for the Republican nomination in 2024, um, he issued a proclamation because the, the woman actually who finished second in the race is a resident of the state of Florida. So we've got a little video here from Governor Ron DeSantis congratulating a Floridian. If you look at what the NCAA has done uh, by allowing basically men to compete in women's athletics, in this case, the swimming, you had the number one woman who finished was from Sarasota, Emin Wyant. She won the silver medal. She's been an absolute superstar her whole career. She trains, I mean, to to compete at that level is very, very difficult. And you don't just roll out of bed and do it. That takes grit, that takes determination. And she's been an absolute superstar. And she had the fastest time uh, of any woman in college athletics. Now, the NCAA uh, is basically taking efforts to destroy women's athletics. They're trying to undermine the integrity of the competition, and they're crowning somebody else uh, the woman's champion. Yeah, Emma Wyant is her name, I believe. So um, I, I love this. I love what he did. You know, I think that it, we were kind of. Uh, beating a dead horse, you know, with with just harping on this trans person, they shouldn't be there. They shouldn't be there, which is true, obviously. But you know, it's important too to to recognize. I think the the people who are really deserving, you know, of of actual praise, which in this case would be the the actual first place winner of the race. You know, we're not talking about her enough. So I'm glad yeah. that he he uh, came out and you know congratulated her. And I'm coming around to to your way of thinking maybe a little bit. I'm a little stubborn in all this because I, I look at a lot of things that happen in the periphery as distractions. And and I am focused like a laser beam on the things that are important to me, mm-hmm. like low taxes and the private sector and, and getting all these things right. But I'm beginning to see that there is room to play on that playing field as well and that when we push back with the truth, I think it means something when we just sit back and, you know, Republicans are like this. It's like we want to get along to go along and, you know, we don't want to make too many waves. If you'll just let us have low taxes and grow our economy and all that, you can have all that silly stuff over there. Uh, But the silly stuff starts to matter. It matters more than the other stuff, I think. No, you think that. What what is a woman, Mm -hmm. I believe now, after last week and after mm-hmm. the last couple months, what is a woman is like the defining question of certainly of this year, maybe of the past s- several years. Well, are you a biologist? No, but it's just, <laughs> it's so, it's so uh, perfectly illustrates right. the, the cultural divide in this country. Yeah. It is such a simple question and people can't answer it. Even people that are biologists, even people that are, you know, quote unquote, scientists or doctors or Supreme Court nominees, you can get uh, appointed, nominated to the Supreme Court for being a woman. And then you can't define what a woman is. You can be a feminist and say that woman, women deserve equal pay for equal work, which is not even 
an issue. It's already legally the case. But regardless, you can be, you know, a feminist and, and argue for women's rights and all these things, but then not define what a woman is. Yeah. So it's just it's so I think perfectly boils down to the core of like the issue. Yeah. You know, well, I want to frame perfect, this. It's a perfect question. I want to frame this and do a deeper dive when we talk about the Supreme Court. But as I've said before, it, my belief is always, you know, I have certain rights. You have certain rights. But when your rights transgress mine, then we're going to have a problem. So if, if you want to call yourself a pogo stick and go bouncing off down the road, I've got no problem with that. You can be a pogo stick all day if you want to be a pogo stick. Right, but it doesn't change the truth of what I am. I mean, I can, I can, I have the right to be wrong and delusional, but that doesn't change the fact that I'm wrong and delusional. But the issue that I have with this whole swimming thing, as I've said before, is because of Title IX and trying to create a level playing field for biological women, this crosses that barrier. Right. If this guy, whatever, Leah... It became Leah, right? Mm-hmm. If Leah wants to say Leah's a woman and walk down the road and you know wear high heels and a dress and do whatever the biological women do, if you can define that, I've got no problem with that. But but where her rights, his rights, its rights transgress, you know, biological women, that's where I have a problem. Right. So uh, we'll talk about that more when we talk about the Supreme Court. Yep. Let's have a little fun here, and this is the latest word salad. From Vice President Harris. Now, I wonder if, you know, they tell her, we need you to fill a certain amount of time, mm-hmm. and she only has so many words, and she's trying to get to the finish line. Right. So she just keeps. Re- we have not edited this. I want to make that clear. We have not edited this. This is uh, Vice President Harris on the significance of the passage of time. About the significance of the passage of time, right? The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time in terms of what we need to do to lay these wires, what we need to do to create these jobs. And there is such great significance to the passage of time. I mean, you know, what do you say? You know, I've, I've heard uh, a lot of people make this point, and I think it's the best uh, analysis of that. It sounds like when you're in like middle school or high school and you're trying to finish a book report yeah. or like an essay, and but you don't have anything to say you didn't actually read the book so you're just like writing filler things or like when a teacher asks you you know like uh they're like oh uh what was the what was the message in chapter four dale and you're like chapter four the message (laughs) well you know the message was really important in chapter four and i'm glad you asked me that question because i really took strongly to that message in chapter four and it was a very significant message in chapter four of the book that i totally read (laughs) i remember when i was in boy scouts all right you had to take citizenship were you a boy scout no all right i was and the scout master needed to quiz you on certain things and one of them was checks and balances you know and i'm a young kid i didn't really know what checks and balances were Mm -hmm. and so i'm sitting there trying to bullshit this scout master and i said well you know you've got a checking account and the checking account's got a balance in it. And so you want to make sure that you don't write checks that would bounce against that balance because otherwise, you know, your your checkbook is not in balance. That's it's, pretty good, actually. It's not at all what checks and balances is, but at least it makes sense. <laughs> at least it's like a coherent thought that is like, you know, you're, you're taking yeah. a stab at it. She at is a heartbeat away from what Nancy Pelosi described as the perfect president. We'll get to that in just a second. Uh, but I can only imagine what the media would be doing to her if she were a Republican like Dan Quayle. Now, Newt Gingrich, who's completely out of politics now, the former Speaker of the House, um, nobody can really come after him anymore because he just doesn't care. Mm -hmm. He actually was quoted as saying that Kamala Harris is the dumbest person ever to hold the office. (laughs) That sounds about right. Quote, unquote, dumbest person to ever hold the office. He said she should never leave the residence again during this term. (laughs) <laughs> because she might have to say something and reveal the fact that she is the dumbest person ever to hold the office. I mean, you know, the, the previous holder was Dan Quayle, and he's got to be like having his own parade with Kamala Harris being the vice president. Is he still around? I don't I really know much about I think he is still around, yeah. You, know, you think back, because I felt sorry for Dan Quayle. I knew him, a mm-hmm. senator from Indiana, mm-hmm. um, a guy with no gravitas. That's one of the big buzzwords. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Dan didn't have any of it. Mm-hmm. And they always said that it was George H.W. Bush's great insurance policy mm-hmm. because nobody wanted Dan Quayle to be president. 
Uh, now we're in a period of time where nobody wants Joe Biden to be president, except we don't want Kamala Harris even worse. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough to say which which one of them would be worse. I mean, I think Kamala is arguably more radical uh, in terms of her politics. You know, Biden is kind of just a puppet at this point, but Kamala seems to, you know, genuinely be more of a radical politician. But yeah, the main thing is she just has no idea what she's doing. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Well, we'll get to more on her because it also ties into the Supreme Court and the grand bargain that was struck to make Joe Biden the president of the United States. But how about this? Um, uh, Nancy Pelosi asked about Joe Biden, you know, with all of the uh, polls going the wrong way, two thirds of the country thinks we're on the wrong track. And they said, well, what do you think about Joe Biden? Joe Biden is a great president. He is a gift. As I've said to him, don't say I told you this, but what I've said to him sometimes, I'm glad you didn't win before because we really needed you to win now for president. (laughs) He's perfect. He's perfect for now. I mean, it would have been perfect then, but perfect. We need him now because he, as I said before, showed progress, shows, gives hope, shows empathy for the needs of people have but in everything that he does he is so inclusive okay so this perfect president that we have the white house spent the weekend cleaning up his ad libs because he was making speeches overseas and um he went into a room with a bunch of soldiers right and he said uh, hey guys uh you're 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 gonna be going into ukraine soon yeah ukrainian people have a lot of backbone they have a lot of guts and i'm sure you're observing it and I don't mean just the military, which is we've been trained in since back when they uh, Russia moved into uh, in, in the southeast southeast um, Ukraine, but also the average citizen. Look at how they're stepping up. Look at how they're stepping up. And you're going to see when you're there, and you've, some, some of you have been there. You're going to see. You're going to see women, young people standing standing in the middle of the front of a damn tank. It's just saying, I'm not leaving. I'm holding my ground. And the White House goes, no, we're not sending troops into Ukraine. <laughs> and then he gives the defining speech of his presidency. His Ronald Reagan, you know, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. And it comes down to, um, God, I just can't. We can't have that guy run in Russia. And the White House is saying, we are not for regime change. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, he just is stepping all over it. And then I also... Uh, another interesting thing about that trip to Poland is like the optics of like watching him with the soldiers. Yeah. Have you have you seen these videos? I have. There's plenty of videos that have come out, and there's one in particular that you can watch. Go watch the whole. Like, don't think we're taking this out of context. Go watch the whole speech, um, and just see the vibe. But there's a video of him eating a slice of pizza, and he's in like the mess hall. Right. I saw. And this. these soldiers are all sitting around him, <laughs> and they're like looking back at him and laughing and stuff. And like, I'll drop the clip. Even the soldiers, like, that he's there to support and, yeah. like, promote are not taking this guy seriously. No, they're and not. And then if you, com- if you compare that to, like, Trump going uh, when he went over to Iraq and when he, when he was overseas, I mean, he was, like, a freaking superstar over there. People had their phones out. They're, like, yeah. screaming and shouting, and he's, like, riling up the crowd, you know, and... and It's just night and day, and it's like genuinely 
I mean, it's funny, but it's also genuinely concerning. I mean, like most things with the, the Biden presidency, you know. We got a long way to go on this presidency, yeah. too. Just saying. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the rest of the day, every speech he gave, it was kind of like this. He's like, I, I, I had a, a, a piece of pie. Yeah. Pizza pie. Yeah. And it has some peppers on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you can just, you can tell so much from, from the smallest little uh, clips, you know, with him. Like just watching him eat that slice of pizza. He's yeah. like, yeah. You know, yeah. He's like reaching for his water, and like, yeah. Uh, it's like this is this is like a, a a dementia ridden old man. He should be in a nursing home. What is going on? <laughs> well, the home he lives in is the White House at sixteen hundred Pennsylvania right. Avenue, which is a problem. Yeah. All right. So, uh, last thing on the news front here before we get to the Supreme Court, uh, President Biden expected to propose a new tax. On the richest Americans today, according to CNBC, the billionaire minimum income tax would oppose 20% minimum tax rates on households worth more than $100 million. Now, that's one-tenth of a billionaire, right? That's yeah. that's not How a billionaire. How does that work? <clears throat> it's expected that half the revenue would come from people with a net worth of more than a billion dollars. So here we go again. The Democrats, uh, they ran play number one into the ground during the Supreme Court hearings. You know, play number one, in case you're a first timer with the podcast here, is uh, that it's racist. Mm -hmm. It's racist. Um, Play number two in the Democrat playbook is um, somebody has something that you don't, and it's not fair. Right. Okay. So, again, none of this has anything to do with reality. Because in reality, this $30 trillion debt that we have, over a trillion dollars in uh, deficit, those are two different things, look it up, um, are for social programs. It's not about funding the government. None of this is about funding the government. Right. Because he'll go around the country, hopefully he hasn't had a piece of pizza pie with you know peppers on it, so he'll be able to say this a little more clearly. He says, it's about paying your fair share. Right. <laughs> okay. That's pretty good. All right. Well, you know, I'm working on it. Um it's not about paying the fair share. It is about redistributing income. Yeah. That's all this is about. Well, we've talked about this before, and I'll mention it again, that taxes have become uh, punishment. Taxes have become punishment on the rich. It's not about, you know, just look at the way they talk about it. It's not about uh, funding the government because everyone knows if you look at the numbers, they can raise all the taxes they want, it's not going to come close to the amount of spending that is being proposed and that has already come through. Not even close. Um, I mean, think about what the value of this country is and then look at the debt. We're at $30 trillion on the debt yeah. side and that clock is is accelerating. Yeah, yeah. And just, you know, like you said, we're, we're prioritizing uh, social programs, spending on social programs. We're prioritizing increasing funding for all the departments and agencies we're prioritizing sending 16 billion dollars to ukraine so you know it's yeah. that's not going to change all right so on to the um, supreme court hearings the circus that was katanji brown jackson who was nominated uh, to be an associate justice on the supreme court by the president based on two criteria a black woman yeah who cannot define what a woman is. She was asked that by a senator, and her answer to that was, I'm not a biologist. Right. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. You can't? N- not in okay. this context. So I'm not a biologist. the meaning of the word woman is so unclear and controversial that you can't give me... A definition? Senator, in my work as a judge, what I do is I address disputes. If there's a dispute about a definition, people make arguments, and I look at the law, and I decide. So I'm not... The fact that you can't give me a straight answer about something as fundamental as what a woman is underscores the dangers of the kind of progressive education that we are hearing about. I mean, wouldn't it just be easy to say that, well, the president said he was going to nominate a black woman, and I checked those boxes, so I must be a woman. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, or you could just, like, actually answer the question. I mean, that it is so telling of our time like this is why i say this is the most important question yeah like because it is so telling of our time that p- 
people can't answer that question. And like she, it's not that she doesn't know what a woman is. She knows what a woman is. She just doesn't want to answer the question because of the political uh, landmine that it presents. Now that we have all of this weird stuff going on, everyone knows what a woman is. If you ask, like, I'll, I'll ask you right now, what is a woman? It's a female, female of the species. Yeah, and what is a female? The opposite of a male. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's that's fine. I, I mean, mean, seriously, yeah. why do we need to define it much more than that? No, it's it's really simple. I mean, I say uh, a woman has girl parts and makes babies. How hard is that? Well, I mean, it's not hard, but there are women out there who don't have the girl parts anymore for one reason or another. Right, but they're still a woman. Right. It, I mean, it, it's like saying a human has two arms and two legs, but then there's some guy out there that, you know, is missing an arm. He's well, still I human. get it. Uh, so I, I, there's, a, there's a reason why they were asking these questions. It's all theater. Let's, let's get that on the table first. This is all theater. Uh, the Kavanaugh hearing was, was terrible. I mean, the Democrats took that to a new low. But it was all theater. Mm -hmm. And this is all theater as well. In fact, it's like wrestling. I mean, you know, they probably go back behind the the doors there of the hearing room and it's like, oh, yeah, we really got you on that one. You, oh, we got you on that one. Um, it's all about theater. And none of it matters anymore because now you don't have to have 60 votes to confirm a Supreme Court justice. Right. So this is all about having the White House and having the thinnest of margins in the United States Senate. You can pretty much get anybody um, elected. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think you're right. Uh, the The questioning by the Republicans clearly is not going to make much of a difference. It in, won't make any difference. In her confirmation. But I think it is important. I, I mean, I think it is important to uh, ask these questions. You know, people people are also asking about her record, you know, being lenient on child sex offenders, which right. is something else that is an issue, you know, and, and it's worth asking. And she didn't really provide a good answer. So, um, it, you know, it's the same thing as like sending a bill to is like the Republicans putting a bill through the Senate like they're doing with the uh, air, no masks on airplanes. Mm -hmm. Right. And sending it to Biden's desk and he vetoes it. They know it's not going to go through. You know, they know the Republicans in the Senate in these hearings know that she's going to get confirmed, but it's still worth asking the questions and bringing to light these issues, I think. Well, let's tell the truth here, because this is all about the grand deal that Joe Biden made to become president. He was trailing in the polls. He got to South Carolina. He went to James Clyburn, who is a major power broker in the state of South Carolina. And Clyburn said to him, here's one, two things I want from you. You're going to name a female of color as vice president, and the first Supreme Court seat you get will go to a black female. That's why this happened. That's the grand bargain that Joe Biden struck, and that's why we are here at this point. Yeah, I, I guess so. I don't really know much yep. about that. So, you know, and, and the questioning, you know, with Kavanaugh, they went back to high school and, and you know, were you a rapist in high school? And you said this in a yearbook, you did this at a party, you drank beer, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, that was fine for the Democrats to do that, right? right. The Republicans focused on things she might actually have before her at the Supreme Court. Yeah and or things in her background that really matter. She's on the board of a private school in Washington, D.C. that is pushing critical race theory. Yep. And she said, I didn't know anything about it. How BS. can you How can you not know BS. anything about it? You're on the board. It's BS. Yeah. And, and the definition of a woman, you can bet that's going to hit the high court. Title you know? IX. Title we just IX talked about Title IX. Is, is going to come before the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, she's not going to answer any of those questions. All these nominees, Republicans and Democrats, it's a dance that they do. Right. The, to say things but not really say things. I right. mean, Kamala Harris ought to be on the court because she can say nothing right. in a soundbite. Yeah, exactly. We just had that in the word and, you know, salad. People are, people are saying, well, why did they ask her what is a woman? Like, that's such a that question is such out of left field. You know, that, that question's never been asked before. And it's like, yeah. That question has never been asked before because up until very recently, we knew what a woman is. It would be totally it would be totally irrelevant to ask it. If you asked it at a Supreme Court hearing, they'd be like, like, duh, like, why are you even asking that question? But now it's a controversial thing because we are like totally abandoning reality as a country. We're totally abandoning the truth and we're in clown world. So now it is relevant to ask that question because they can't answer it. <laughs> to wrap all of this up, and tie it together with the Oscars. I think we should give the Academy Award for the hearings to New Jersey Senator Cory Booker. She's my icon of America. Her name is Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman is one of my heroes because the more I read about this person, the more 
I mean, she was viciously beaten. Her whole life, she used to fall into spells, cracked skull. She faced starvation, chased by dogs. And when she got to freedom, what did she do? Did she rest? No, she went back. Again and again and again. The, star was, the sky was full of stars. But she found one that was a harbinger of hope. For better days, not just for her and those people that were enslaved, but a, a harbinger of hope for this country. And she never gave up on America. She fought in the led troops in the Civil War. She was involved in the suffrage movement. And as I came back from my run, after being near assaulted by, a, by someone on the street, I thought about her and how she looked up. She kept looking up. No matter what they did to her, she never stopped looking up. And that star... It was a harbinger of hope. Today, you're my star. You are my harbinger of hope. That was his uh, Spartacus sequel moment. Exactly. Spartacus too. <laughs> he did get an Oscar for Spartacus as well, just in case you were wondering about that. So um, next up on the podcast, gas from all angles. Here we are again. Uh, gas prices have kind of leveled off at... Um, the high point. At very expensive. <laughs> At very expensive. As an arm and a leg. Um, and I, I put this fifth, but I want to make it, I want to move it up in the order here because it's just it's just so good in terms of uh, our wire service here in the building. Because, you know, it's written by the folks at NBC, and so they always try and put a liberal spin on it, right? Right. Okay. KC area residents on both sides of state line are enjoying some of the nation's lowest gas prices. Oh. Did you know that? Enjoying. Enjoying. I think is the key word there. Yes. Yeah. Even though in California it's 5.88 a gallon, uh, the Sunflower State and its neighbor averaging prices of 3.76 and 3.77. That's so great. Isn't that wonderful, Kurt? I'm, en- I'm enjoying this. Yeah, you're enjoying these gas prices. Just ridiculous. I mean, I will say in, in a sense they're not wrong. I mean, I, I'm, I do enjoy living in where we do and not yeah. living in California or New York. Yeah, but it was like a buck seventy nine, right? When Trump was president. Yeah, of course. I of mean, course. so it's it's like doubled. Okay, so the International Energy Agency put out a list of things that you can do with these high gas prices. Okay, are you ready for some of these? Mm-hmm. They're really great tips. You know, uh, number one is go slower. Yeah. If you go slower. You know, you'll you'll uh, do better on the on the gas mileage. Can I guess? I haven't heard this before, so can I guess on these? Sure. I'm going to guess that one of them is take the bus or take public transportation. Public transportation is on here. I'm going to guess one of them is carpool. Carpool is uh, yeah, that's on here. I'm going to guess one is buy an electric car. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, of course. Come on, man. And <laughs> um, what else? I guess that's it. Well, let me jump in with some of these. Um, work from home, which has become oh, a big yeah. thing with COVID. Yeah, work from so. home up to three days a week. Um, commit to a car-free Sunday. You don't need your car can, on can Sunday. Can I pause you there for a second? Sure, absolutely. Do you think that would work here if I say, hey, I need to work from home for three days a week because of gas prices? Well, you know, during COVID, it did. You know, <laughs> the only people who came down here were the on-air personalities. That's true. And I liked it. I mean, I got a lot more work done because all these people weren't here. It's funny because <laughs> the big boss, you know, we, we, we had department head meetings via Zoom. Mm-hmm. And when it was determined we were all going to come back, um, he went around the, the Zoom call and he said, I want everybody to, to, you know, have a little statement about what they have missed and what they're looking forward to with everybody coming back. It gets to me as the old curmudgeon. And I'm like, I wish you people weren't coming back. Because I got a lot more work done. Yeah. Well, it's like, without naming any names, I can say that I've talked to some of the other on-air people, and uh, you're not alone in that sentiment. Yeah, so. exactly. So <laughs> car-free Sundays, uh, make public transportation cheaper, and incentivize walking and cycling. Oh, great. Yeah. Alternate private car access to every other day. So, Kurt, you would only get to use your car on the freeways on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Mm. What do you think? No. Nah. You mentioned electric cars, more efficient vehicles, yada, yada, yada. You know, here, here's where I'm going to throw in that years ago, I was on something called the Regional Rail Task Force with the county administrator at the time, a guy named Mike Sanders, 
Democrat, ended up going to prison because he had all kinds of malfeasance going on in his campaign. Mm-hmm. But but I love the guy. Um, and, and I thought it was it was showing where a Republican and a Democrat could work together on something in a bigger picture kind of way. And he had a plan to use existing rail in Jackson County uh, to basically um, have rail transportation all the way from like Oak Grove into the city, uh, down south, up to the airport and all that. And, and I was behind that 110%. Now, for different reasons, you know, is there a global warming, climate change side benefit to all this? There might be. The way I look at the world, economic development was the reason to do it. Mm -hmm. Because everywhere you put a train station in big cities, economic development sprouts around it. Mm -hmm. So it's a great thing for the economy. And, And I thought because, I mean, you've flown into KCI, right? Yep. And you've driven that god awful stretch all the way into downtown. Yep. Imagine the, the, convention business we could get in Kansas City if you could get on a train at KCI that takes you downtown. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that would be great. Yeah, it's just it's one of those things. It's like the streetcar, you know, like the streetcar right. is is supposed to be this community investment thing that's going to build businesses and stuff, but it ended up in my opinion just being way overpriced. I mean, it's so expensive and it seems more of like a you know, like a, a decoration. Really. It's not going to, to, to enough places yet. Right. Right. And, and I, I thought that when the streetcar started, you know, and it's been built onto, I, I guess the next phase is going to go from the plaza to UMKC, yep. which is the next phase of it. But just imagine a world where I'm in blue Springs and I can get on a train right. and I can come down here to Westport. Yeah. I don't need my car anymore. Yeah. That and, is a little bit different. I think that's more useful. And I'll, I mean, a lot or most other major cities have something like that. I mean, I, I grew up in uh, the Philadelphia area. Right. We have SEPTA, so you know. South, Southeastern Pennsylvania Transit Authority. So they have regional rail there. I lived in D.C. They had the metro system, which is one of the best, best in the Best in America, yeah. I think. Um, and it's, you know, probably not as nice now. But uh, And then even St. Louis, you know, they have yeah. uh, – uh, Metro Link out in St. Louis, they have something like that too. But what Kansas City also has is the most freeway miles per capita in the United States. Yep. And individualistic people who say, screw you, I'm not giving up my car. Right. That's what we ran into, and that's why it failed, is because people said, I'm not giving up my car. Screw well, you. Do they ha- Why do they think they have to give up their car? Well, they just, I think they thought that's where it was going. Right. Right. And they, you know, it just, it failed. You know, the vote failed. Yeah. I mean, the bottom line is that it will be very expensive and we're already spending way too much money on all these other things. Won't be as expensive as it is to build from scratch. And KC Southern was the big roadblock in there as well because they own the tracks. We were going to take their tracks, which was going to, you know, cut the cost precipitably. Yeah. That'd be an interesting conversation. Well, it was an interesting conversation. I, I think it's dead right now, but yeah. it was it was back in the day. Okay, gas uh, no, item number two here. Uh, I went back and I watched John McCain's uh, campaign videos from 2008 when he ran against Obama. And, you know, he was talking about global warming because he was kind of a rhino-ish, rhino-esque. Mm-hmm. Is, is that the term? Yeah, yeah sure. that'll work. Um, but he also was big on national security. And he said, if we get to a point where we're getting too much oil from people who don't like us, we're going to be in real trouble in America. Mm-hmm. We need to become energy independent. Mm-hmm. We need to be drilling now, was a big John McCain rallying cry. Uh, and look where we are now. We were energy independent very briefly when Donald Trump was president, and we are definitely not now. And the places that we're getting oil from around the world, they really don't like us. Yeah, 100%. I'm not a huge McCain supporter. I mean, I think he is a rhino in a lot of ways, but I mean, he certainly got that one right. If, if it is uh, what you yeah. say it is. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. So gas item number three, Fox News says the U.S. government may issue stimulus checks for gasoline. Oh, boy. Yeah. A um, hundred bucks a month for the rest of 2022. Wow. To help bridge the gap. Again, nothing about, you know, what we really need to do, the root cause. Yeah. Why we need to get energy independent again, it's all about, well, how do we bridge this gap, especially through the election? Because if it gets one or two Democrats that are on the bubble right. in the midterm through the finish line, yeah. that's what it's all about. Well, that's obviously what it's all about. And they might as well make it even more transparent and say through the end of November of this exactly. year <laughs> instead of through the end of the year. Yeah. But uh, 
Yeah, I mean, how, what's that going to do to inflation? You got to think about that too. Inflation is transitory. You yeah. know, Th- that was the rallying cry last year, but now it's like eh, inflation's here to stay for a well, while. Well, now it's Putin's fault. So. Yeah, it's always somebody's fault. Okay, so um, and, and I saw this initially, and I thought, wow, this is my God! Even a blind squirrel can find an acorn once in a while, right? Uh, the U.S. and European Union striking a deal that would cut Europe's reliance on Russia for natural gas. U.S. agreeing to help provide Europe with an extra 15 billion cubic meters of liquefied natural gas this year. Now, that sounds really great, right? Maybe. You ready for the other shoe to drop? Sure. Okay. It requires infrastructure that's two to five years out. Uh, we can't do it for two to five years. And uh, my other question, too, is... You know, you know that I'm America first. I mean, are we? Do we have enough natural gas? Are we providing ourselves with enough natural gas? If we have a surplus, right? Then I'm happy to sell it to Europe or anyone else. I'm happy to sell it to Russia or China. You know, yeah. whoever wants to buy it. But we should make sure that we have enough energy for ourselves. We're energy independent first, and then we can, you know, right. sell it to other people. What we were saying before is, you know, we for natural gas, we lead the world, right? In natural gas, right? And, you know, when I eat at Rancho Grande, I try and contribute to that. <laughs> not sure it's the same thing. I'm not sure you really want to liquefy that. Um, <laughs> Put it in a bottle and then see, see if you can uh, fill up your uh, fill up your your uh, water heater at home. <laughs> so there you go. I mean, we're going to be in this bind for a while until we change course, change policy. These other things they're talking about, the strategic reserve we've talked about before, they're Band-Aids. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're Band-Aids, and our patient needs open-heart surgery. Yeah, it's a Band-Aid, and it's a distraction. It's, yeah. a, dis- it's a distraction from the real issue, um, and the powers that be want you to think that they're doing something to fix the problem when mm-hmm. they're only making it worse. All right. And so we have no other solutions other than what we've given you. So, you know, if you're in power and you're a Democrat or whatever, we've given you the tools that you need to get this done. And if not, I guess we'll just have to wait till after the red wave in November. <laughs> I think Joe Biden watches this podcast, actually. I heard that on Good Faith. <laughs> <laughs> While he's running on the treadmill, yeah, no right. doubt, or walking slowly yeah. <laughs> on the treadmill. All right. Personality <laughs> over the bigger picture. I have a couple of Trump dates for you. We haven't done a Trump date in a while. Um, former President Trump in for a big payday from Stormy Daniels. Have you heard about this? No. Yeah. Uh, the adult film star liable for nearly $300,000 in attorney's fees after a federal appeals court refused to reverse a decision made by the lower court. Daniels failed in her defamation suit against Trump after she claimed she had sex with him. Trump celebrated the ruling by calling Daniels' lawsuit a purely political stunt. Daniels responded to a Twitter user celebrating the ruling. She wrote, I will go to jail before I pay a penny. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, Trump's uh, statement there is obviously 100% accurate. And then the other thing is that, you know, her lawyer, her initial lawyer, Avenatti, he's going to jail for, um, you know, God knows what. I mean, that guy's a creep. So Mm. that goes to show you, you know, the the company you keep, right? Exactly. And uh, the president, uh, former president Donald Trump, said the U.S. should send nuclear armed submarines to threaten Russian forces attacking Ukraine. In an interview with uh, Fox Business, he said if he were president, he'd tell Russia's Vladimir Putin, we'll be coasting back and forth up and down your coast with nuclear submarines. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's probably a little late for that right now, but. That was the strategy that he used before. I mean, he told Putin apparently to his face that he would bomb Moscow if if he invaded Ukraine. How do you say with a straight face then that Vladimir Putin preferred Donald Trump when, you know, he went into the Crimea under Barack Obama and he's doing what he's doing in Ukraine with Joe Biden as president? Right. He didn't do anything when Donald Trump was president. Right. Well, I think two things can be true at once. I think he prefers the policies of Biden and Obama, but I think he liked Trump more as a person. I, th- I mean, I think, you know, based on the the public aspects of their relationship, they seem to get along better. You know, they talked more. Uh, Trump praised Putin, you know, on, on several occasions, which I'm sure Putin liked. But at the end of the day, that's all just kind of surface level whatever. You know, I mean, yeah. Trump was way stronger in terms of policy. He was way stronger on Russia than the current administration. So yeah, you have to think that that Putin, you know, is pretty happy with with the current occupant of the White House right now. Well, I call this personality over the bigger picture because obviously 2024 is looming large and I don't want to blow it. 
I want to make sure we win. I don't want to blow the midterm election. I want to make sure that we win. Mm-hmm. And in the state of Missouri, Eric Greitens, the former governor who resigned after a scandal, um, he is one of the folks who is on the ballot for the Republican nomination. And his ex-wife, soon-to-be ex-wife, are they finally divorced know. or they're going through the divorce proceedings? I don't know. Came out with some some really you know hot takes on him as a parent and as, as a husband and all that. And uh, that's kind of hitting the fan right now. And one of my friends um, called me and asked, well, what do you think of all this? And, and here's what I think. We have that seat. That's a Republican seat right now. I don't want to screw around and lose that seat. Okay. Right. We, we had an election a couple of times ago uh, where a guy named Todd Aiken became the nominee. And then all of a sudden stuff surfaced about Todd. It became less about policy. It became more about personality. And that's how Claire McCaskill squeaked in, even though she had terrible poll numbers. Right. Okay. I don't want to lose that seat. We have other Republicans uh, that are in that fold. You've got uh, Vicki Hartzler. You've got Eric Schmidt. Um, who's the congressman from Southwest Missouri? Billy. Billy Long. Yeah, Billy Long. Yeah. You know, you got some other people in there. There's about six names out there. McCloskey. But those, McCloskey in St. Louis. Yeah. Those are the Those are the big names that are out there. I want a conservative Republican to take that seat, and I don't want any distractions. Right. That's where I am on it. Yeah, I get that. I mean, I, I think in an ideal world, you know, those those distractions would not be effective, and people, the, the voters would actually, like, focus on who the real, true conservative right-wing candidate is and, and support them, but that's not the reality of the situation at this point. So I think you're you're correct in, in that analysis. Um, you know, I wish Eric would step aside. There's too much shit around him right now yeah. and unfortunately he is making it all about him yeah and i don't really know much about his politics either you know if he if he's Good like conservative pretty, pretty conservative he or, and trump are tight you know yeah. uh but i heard billy long on the air uh last week somewhere talking about how donald trump texted him while he was in the walmart right <laughs> it's right. like yeah, i'm in the walmart you know right. how he talks yeah. right yeah. i'm in the walmart and i got a text there from donald trump yeah <laughs> He w- he uh, spoke at that uh, We the People thing that I went to yeah. a-, a few weeks ago, and uh, he's very charismatic, very charismatic guy. He's kind of – his speech there was is very uh, Trumpian, you know. It was like a stand-up comedy routine. Yeah. It's pretty funny. I mean, we want a conservative Republican in that seat. Mm-hmm. I mean, fact of the matter is we kind of have a rhino in that seat right now. Yeah. So what if we went with a conservative Republican, you know, to match the other guy that we got, Josh Hawley, who's yeah. in there. Yeah. Um, and he's been doing great, by the way. Hawley, I mean, I think such a good metric is the the people that get all the slings and arrows from the left and are hated the most by the left. Yeah. Those are probably the people who are being the most effective. Those are probably the people who are who have their finger on the pulse and are doing the right thing. Holly is is the number one villain of the Kansas City Star, you know, yeah. the pamphlet that used to be a newspaper in yeah. Kansas City. I'm sure that in the editorial room they've got like a, you know, a dartboard with his face on it right. and all that. And that's probably a good thing. Yeah, totally. To totally. your point. All right, well, the uh, midterm is coming up in 224 days, and not only do we want to hang on to what we've got, we want to expand the, uh, the red wave and then make it count. And again, we're going to be talking about that. When that red wave happens, we're going to hold those pe- those people's feet to the fire. I mean, there are things we need to get done in this country, and we can't just have them say, okay, we won. Isn't that great? Pop some champagne, and it's like, okay, now we'll just keep going as we were going before. Right. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's like winning a playoff game in the NFL. You know, you can celebrate for like – one hour and yeah. then it's back to work. <laughs> we want to hoist the Lombardi trophy. Yeah. And in this case, that's the Constitution. Yes. Let's hoist the Constitution and show them that it really means something. Absolutely. All right. Before we go, um, when to call 911 and not to call 911. You know, we had a, a deal here at the radio station, as you know, where one of the hosts of our stations, they, they have these um, uh, deals on Friday where they bring a dog in or whatever. Mm-hmm. And she got bit by a pit bull, and it was really bad. I think I mean, it was a Rottweiler, actually. Was it? Almost yeah. took her nose off. Yeah. I mean, I mean, seriously, blood everywhere. Called nine one one and got put on hold. Yep. We'll get back to you. I've called. I've called KC nine one one, and they didn't even answer. Yeah. Or I didn't. I didn't even. Uh, yeah, I got a voicemail or something like that. So this may be the reason why, because in Ohio. Um, Police there are reminding folks that 911 is for actual emergencies. This after a woman in Euclid, Ohio, called 911 because she said she didn't get enough chicken in her order from KFC. 
the responding oh. officer said um, there wasn't anything he could do. <laughs> <laughs> what if he was like, oh, man, I'll get right on that. And you like, <laughs> then he goes down to the KFC. He like busts open the door with the battering ram and he like runs in there, you know. We're going to get extra biscuits and extra mashed potatoes and gravy for you. Yeah. Just yeah. so you know, that's when you do not call. 911. God, so, that is bad. <laughs> with that lesson, a very full episode. This is Dale Carter's America. The views expressed on Dale Carter's America are Dale's and Kurt Wheeler's. They do not necessarily reflect the views of KFKF or Steel City Media. Comments can be sent to Dale Carter's America at gmail.com. Check back for weekly episodes. Subscribe, spread the word, and give us a five star review. Thanks for being a part of Dale Carter's America.